The Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps IRGC, is the main force of the Iranian regime, which both oppresses people inside Iran and exports chaos and terrorism abroad. The IRGC, according to its statute, is an entity under the command of the Supreme Leader. The IRGC hinges on exporting fundamentalism, terrorism and warmongering, and this in itself is bent on the universal doctrine of the Mullah's rule. In this regard the IRGC has been entrusted to fully advance the regime's nuclear weapons program. But the question is how this entity is funded? In this program, we intend to show how the world's largest terrorist organization is funded. The IRGC controls Iran's economy through 14 powerhouses. These powerhouses fund the IRGC's activities and its subsidiaries, such as the terrorist Quds Force and Besij Militia. These powerhouses are 1. The headquarters for executing the order of the Imam, Sayyid. 2. The Most Hazifan Foundation. 3. Astani Kodzi Razavi. 4. Shahid Foundation. 5. MDAD Committee. 6. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, Cooperative Foundation. 7. The Khatam Al Anbiya Construction Headquarters. 8. The Cooperative Foundation of the Basish Force. 9. The Gadir Investment Company. 10. The Armed Forces Social Welfare Investment Organization. SATA 11. Katam Alosia Construction Headquarters 12. The Cooperative Foundation of the State Security Forces, NAJA 13. The Cooperative Foundation of the Army, Taja 14. The Cooperative Foundation of the Armed Forces Joint Chiefs of Staff, VDJA Now let's take an in-depth look at these foundations. The information in this program are excerpts of NCRI U.S. Office book The Rise of the Revolutionary Guards Financial Empire. 1. Sayyid Adi Ajira E. E. Farman E. Hazradi Imam. Herein, referred to as Sayyid, is the richest and highest revenue-generating enterprise controlled by Khamenei. On June 4, 2013, the U.S. Treasury Department subjected this entity and 37 of its associate entities to sanctions pursuant to Executive Order 13599, which blocks the property of the government of Iran. Satan's influence and domination over the Iranian economy surpass even that of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps IRGC. It is the most assertive of the so-called non-government public sector companies when it comes to the confiscation of assets. An important difference between Sayyid and other similar institutions in the sphere of the Supreme Leader's influence is that it has been able to take possession of some of the most profitable and largest commercial and financial firms, thanks to the direct and daily backing of Khamenei himself. A Reuters investigation published in 2013 estimated Sayyid assets to be worth around $95 billion. In reality, Sayyid is the engine of Khamenei's synergy strategy for the Iranian economy. A review of Sayyid's activities also confirms that this complex is one of the most important interlocutors for transactions with Western companies. The new administrative organ of Sayyid has 100 employees and is authorized to make policy and supervise the institution's activities. The members of this board are hand-picked by Khamenei himself. They include the likes of Mullah Hossein Ali Nairi, a judge during the 1988 massacre of thousands of political prisoners, Hossein Shariat Madari, an interrogator torturer, and now Khamenei's representative in the state-run Daily Kaihan, and Mohammad Mohammadi Golpei Ghani, Khamenei's chief of staff. To strengthen the financial backbone of Sayyid, in 2010, Khamenei transferred close to $1 billion worth of assets from Astani Abdalazim in Ray City to Sayyid. 2. Boni Ade Mostazafan. The Islamic Revolution Mostazafan Foundation operates under the direct supervision of Khamenei, who handpicks its president. In 1997, Mohsen Rafiq Dust, the foundation's former president, said the Mostazafan Foundation owned 400 commercial companies, and produced 28% of textiles, 22% of cement, about 45% of non-alcoholic beverages, 28% of tires, and 25% of sugar produced in Iran. 3. Astani Kodzi Razavi the Astani Kodzi Razavi Foundation has been called an unbridled giant when it comes to Iran's political economy. 
It is the largest employer in the northeastern province of Khorasan. It controls more than 50% ownership of at least 58 large companies. It also owns significant shares in 31 other companies. These include financial institutions and brokers, hospitals, media outlets, publishing houses, animal husbandry, internet service companies, and car manufacturers, among many others. Large swathes of farmland in northeastern Iran, estimated to be at least 990,000 acres with an estimated value of over $20 billion, are owned by this foundation. Additionally, 43.5% of Mashhad City's urban land is under the foundation's ownership. It also has endowments in 14 provinces, real estate offices in 20 provinces, and 300,000 rentals. In the context of the regime's export of fundamentalism, the foundation conducts activities in Syria, including bridge construction. In 2016, the foundation and the IRGC conducted negotiations for the foundation to allocate at least 20% of its annual income to cover the IRGC's expenses. 4. Boni Adi Shahid, Martyr The Shahid Foundation was created in 1979 on the orders of former Supreme Leader Ruhollah Khomeini. Its reach grew after the start of the eight-year Iran-Iraq war in the 1980s, as it provided services to the victims' families. Under Khamenei's direct control, the foundation took ownership of many financial, commercial and manufacturing enterprises. Despite owning a vast range of assets and generating significant revenues, it has also allocated a portion of the government budget. The chairman of the foundation is a representative of the Supreme Leader. The U.S. Department of the Treasury designated this foundation on July 24, 2007 under Executive Order 13224. In its statement, Treasury said, The Martyrs Foundation is an Iranian parastatal organization that channels financial support from Iran to several terrorist organizations in the Levant, including Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Palestinian Islamic Jihad PIJ. 5. MDAD, Relief, Committee The Imam Khomeini Relief Committee IKRC, was established on March 5, 1979. Its declared goal is to support the destitute and oppressed and to enable them to be self-reliant. Although the committee receives a remarkable share of the annual government budget, it also runs separate commerce and financial enterprises, obtaining significant profits. Despite its declared aim of helping the destitute, numerous reports, including those published in the regime's own media outlets, confirm that the MDAD committee is part of the regime's apparatus of exporting terrorism and fundamentalism. Its website declares it as offices in Iraq, Lebanon, Azerbaijan, Syria, Tajikistan, Afghanistan and the African country of Comoros. According to state-run media, based on official figures, the MDAD committee has official representation in six countries. On July 8, 2016, Tajikistan's Ministry of Justice asked a court in the country to ban the activities of the MDAD committee. On August 3, 2010, the U.S. Treasury Department designated the Imam Khomeini Relief Committee Lebanon branch pursuant to Executive Order 13224. Treasury stated, Iran has provided millions of dollars to the Hezbollah-run branch in Lebanon since 2007. The IKRC has helped fund and operates Hezbollah youth training camps, which have been used to recruit future Hezbollah members and operatives. Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah has acknowledged the IKRC branch in Lebanon as one of Hezbollah's openly functioning institutions linked to and funded by Iran. On December 20, 2015, Iranian media reported that Parviz Fatah, the head of MDAD, had paid a visit to the Bekha Valley in South Lebanon, which is the stronghold of Hezbollah, to meet with persons who had received the committee's aid. 6. IRGC Cooperative Foundation the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps Cooperative Foundation, Bonier de Tavinsepa, is regarded as the most powerful financial institution in the country. Article 23 of the charter of this so-called foundation states, all of the funds and assets of the foundation belong to His Excellency the Supreme Leader. In case of its dissolution, after settling all debts, all of the properties and assets will be handed over to His Excellency. The foundation is one of the five largest economic powerhouses in the country. The U.S. Treasury Department announced in December 2010 that pursuant to Executive Order 13382, an authority aimed at freezing the assets of proliferators of weapons of mass destruction, Bonier de Tavin Sepa had been designated for providing services to the IRGC. 7. Qatam Al Anbiya Construction Headquarters The Qatam Al Anbiya Construction Headquarters is part of the IRGC. It began as a contractor of industrial and construction projects in 1989. In its charter, 
The most important goal of the complex is to efficiently utilize the available construction and economic resources, capacities and talents of the IRGC to continue the Islamic Revolution. Qatam is the largest contractor for government projects. It has 5,000 subcontractors and about 135,000 employees. The cartel enjoys the complete support of the regime and has easy access to banking and financial resources and sustained contracts with no competitive bidding. It has created an operation whereby it totally dominates industrial and construction projects, as well as a portion of oil and gas deals, rendering the private sector unable to compete. The Qatam headquarters contracting services acts as a huge intermediary between the government and small engineering and technical companies, which have a major portion of their revenue seized by Qatam. Qatam's projects have inflicted catastrophic damage to Iran's economy and environment. Increased salt levels in the Karun River, the largest river in Iran, in addition to a portion of Iran's water crisis in recent years, are a result of the unbridled and unnecessary dam construction by Qatam. Qatam also has extensive operations in the sectors of oil and gas and petrochemicals. For instance, it is responsible for the Phase 15 and 16 development of the South Pars oil and gas field. State-run news agency Erna quoted the director of the National Iranian Oil Company as saying that the Qatam headquarters oil contracts had surpassed $25 billion. In October 2007, the U.S. Treasury Department designated Qatam al anbiya under Executive Order 13382, which freezes the assets of designated proliferators of weapons of mass destruction and their supporters. 8. Basij Cooperative Foundation the Basij Cooperative Foundation belongs to the paramilitary Basij Force, considered one of the five forces of the IRGC. The foundation has a large number of holdings and financial institutions. 9. Gadir Investment Company Gadir is one of the most important investment companies in Iran. Although tied to the Defense Department, government institutions do not have authority or influence over it, the Supreme Leader controls it. The company controls over 16% of cement production in Iran, and 5.2% of cement production in the Middle East and North Africa, which translates into 0.4% of total cement production in the world. In the United States, Qadir Investment Company, has been sanctioned under Iranian transactions and sanctions regulations by the U.S. Treasury Department, which requires U.S. persons to block the property and interests in property of this entity. 10. Armed Forces Social Welfare Investment Organization SATA. The Armed Forces Social Welfare Investment Organization SATA, is made up of a wide range of industrial and investment companies. 11. Qatam Alosia Headquarters Qatam Alosia is tied to the Department of Defense and was founded on the orders of Hamenei in 2010. It is a consortium comprised of five large oil and gas contractors. Qatam Alosia is in essence a cartel of contractors, formed by a large number of contracting companies who leverage political influence to win government contracts without going through a formal process. They then subcontract to engineering companies, winning large sums of profits at the other end. The complex carries out construction and oil projects. It replaced Shell and Repsol in developments in the South Pars field. 12. State Security Forces NAJA, Cooperative Foundation the foundation is tied to the Iranian regime's state security forces, SSF or its Farsi abbreviation NAJA. However, the Interior Ministry has no supervision over it. Its cooperative foundation, which today is one of the largest holding companies in Iran, was established in 1997 but grew to a remarkable scale after 2005. In 2014, state-run media estimated the assets of this foundation to be over $3.2 billion. 13. Army Cooperative Foundation Taja. Fourteen, Joint Chiefs of the Armed Forces Cooperative Foundation (VDJA). The foundation owns multiple companies. According to its former president, the resources of the VDJA Cooperative have increased from $31.5 million in 2009 to $2.2 billion in 2013. Its budget has also increased from $20.5 million in 2009 to $470 million in 2013. Conclusion The vast and interconnected network of wealth and power in the hands of the Supreme Leader is indicative of a sophisticated monopoly over the Iranian economy. 
doing business with Iran is to do business with Khamenei and the IRGC. At the same time, the significant revenues from this monopoly enable and primarily fund the regime's terrorism, intransigence and regional adventurism. Meanwhile, the above facts and figures show that the regime is strategically unstable as a result of these developments to keep pace with the demands of a growing population and a young demographic. From an economic viewpoint, it has accelerated the waste and squanders of Iran's economic resources, leading to a greater recession, more unemployment, and extensive poverty among the population. These excesses have occurred by depriving the society of the ownership of its wealth by means of force. As noted in reference to articles of the regime's constitution, any form of coexistence, peace or engagement between Iran's rulers and Iranian society at large has eroded, leaving only room for permanent tension between the two sides. Moreover, the monopolization itself translates into circumstances that create enormous hurdles to true economic growth and development in Iran. In other words, the supreme leader has amassed its wealth by robbing the Iranian people of theirs, while violating their rights. In the process, and thus, the regime has eradicated the social backing and support instrumental and necessary for a government's stability and legitimacy. That has made Tehran more vulnerable than ever before. As social demands grow in breadth and depth, the regime's ability to respond to those demands appears increasingly limited. That is a recipe for a major social transformation, one that certainly excludes a possible future role for Tehran's theocratic rulers. As mentioned, the IRGC has been plundering the Iranian people's wealth to fund terrorism. The international community should maintain and increase sanctions on the regime and recognize the IRGC as a terrorist entity. It is time for the world community to hold the regime to account. As the Iranian resistance has repeatedly said, holding the regime to account for its crimes and adopting a firm policy toward it is imperative for global peace and security.